Hey guys, this is Jeff, Swing Trade Warrior with WarriorTrading.com. Back with our closed Swing Trade uh, weekly video recap here. Uh, one announcement I want to make. Uh, starting Monday, we're introducing uh, a brand new uh, education course. Uh, it's called the Intro to Trading Course, and it's going to be regularly regularly priced at $4.99. However, uh, for this first seating, it is going to be $99, and you get a copy of that um, you get a copy of that course. Uh, what it is, it's our intro to trading series. So as trading educators, we get a lot of questions that we find are repetitive uh, across the community from people who are looking to start trading. Um, and this is fine. These are normal questions, people doing their due diligence and their research, trying to get these things answered. So this is a three-day long course uh, that's going to cover uh, about 10 chapters of all the things a new trader is going to need to go from uh, reading about trading and uh, watching uh, CNBC to being able to open a broker, set up their account, and learn how to start uh, understanding the fundamentals uh, from of trading and some of the uh, basic, basic um, uh, techniques and indicators and things that you're going to need to know when you're getting off the ground. We also talk about paper trading, risk management, uh, and basically anything that a new trader is going to want or need to know to get their start in this industry. So if that's something you're interested in, I encourage everybody to sign up. I'll put a link down in the description or you can go to warriortrading.com and click on this picture and you'll see this on our website. <clears throat> and book your spot now. Uh, the classes are gonna run after the market closes until all questions are answered. So if you ever had any questions about trading, now will be the time or that will be the time uh, to ask. Uh, Ross and myself will be there. We'll talk about day trading, swing trading, and everything you need to know to get off the ground uh, and get started. There's a lot of confusing information, conflicting information, and it can be very convoluted in uh, very convoluted in industry uh, to begin in. So we're going to help you, and uh, we encourage you to take a look at that. Okay. Having said that, let's get into the swings for this week. Okay, this week was a slow week for me as far as swing trades go. I was out of town uh, the middle of the week. I went to the U.S. Senior Open, and I took my dad uh, for a belated Father's Day gift <clears throat> to go watch his hero golfers, and we had a really good time. Uh, if you've never been to a major golfing event, uh, I would recommend checking that out at least once in your life. It's a pretty cool uh, opportunity, and you definitely get uh, up close and personal. You get to meet some, uh, some interesting people, and if you like golf, it's an incredible experience. Uh, but I was able to manage to trade some this week, and so we'll talk about the trades that uh, we did take. Uh, the first one was on Seed, S-E-E-D. It was alerted to us on the scanner on June 22nd, and they put in a high relative volume, move up, uh, blasting through this 20 moving average after the sell-off from the last big run. So it's starting to reverse its course. We're looking for a trend continuation and a breakout with candle over candle confirmation. Okay, the first day after the alert, we uh, have an entry target of 240 on this trade. Uh, that's the breakout spot for seed. Um, we uh, uh, we got long on this trade. I didn't get long on this trade. Some people got in it before me because I put the entry targets on our watch list, so there's no guessing as to where to buy uh, into the stock. I didn't get long on this trade till 244. I was day trading and I missed my entry. Uh, no big deal. We got in at 244. The breakout is underway and it shot up to 259 intraday. I looked for at least 5% or more before I began scaling out of a move. I had my order set up to sell this, uh, a portion of this, just over 260. It never made it that day. No big deal. Uh, it ended up holding, um, it ended up holding uh, at 250, just under 250 at the close. So it was over our entry price. Uh, the next day, unfortunately, it popped up a little bit, but it could not hang, and it came down. And because we use good risk management techniques by adjusting our stop after the first day of the trade to the low of day of the day that we get in the trade, we ended up exiting on this trade. I had 5,000 shares, and I only took a $300 loss. This is a very small loss, uh, and compared to the wins that we were able to get, and we'll go over some of those in a minute, <clears throat> Compared to the wins that we get using the small cap breakout strategy, we invest very little capital and we see on average 5 to 20% moves after we get in the trade and if not, we stop out for very small losses. This has been a, a very popular strategy and we've had a 70 to 75% win rate so far in the two months that I've been using it live. And I've been paper trading this on my own for months, um, back testing the strategy and <clears throat> finally got it to a point where 
It is now profitable and uh, reliable, and I have established the rules and the structure for the risk management. And I uh, just covered this in my uh, swing trade class today with my students. We taught them the strategy, I gave them the scanners, and now they're able to go out on their own and replicate these kinds of trades. Uh, so let's talk about one that we took this week that was a winner. Caught the alert on SYMX on June 23rd. Uh, there was this high relative volume, moved to the upside, it was breaking this 20 moving average. Our long entry is over the high of the previous day. So we get the alert next day, we get a long entry here over 142, Our entry is 143 <clears throat> once we break this previous high. The stock runs from our entry, it breaks out and moves up to a high of 158 intraday. On a $1 stock, it does not take very many pennies to get your 5 to 10% in profits. We scaled out some on this trade at 5% at 153 or 152. We scaled out another 5% at 157, 158, and we realized uh, just about 7% uh, intraday on this move. Uh, we move our stop to break even once we take profits because we don't need to let the trade come against us and take a loss once we're profitable on it. That would be silly. Uh, the next day, the trade pops up and get candle over candle continuation of the breakout. We're looking for 5 to 20% moves over 3 to 5 days. This thing popped up to $1.68. It's now 20, uh, 20, what is this? Uh, it's 27, 25, 24, 25 cents over our entry on a $1 stock. That's just about 25% top to bottom. That's a pretty big move. Uh, we scaled out. It ended up coming down, not holding uh, the high of day like it did previously, but we don't care because we're already up 10% on the trade. Put our stop at low of day. <clears throat> the next day, it opens up, sells off. We get stopped out. Uh, for uh, It's a profit stop of about 10 cents, and uh, we're winners. We're out of the trade. We don't care what happens now. We locked in our profits on this quick two, three day breakout here. RFP was another trade this week. <clears throat> we got the alert on this trade on uh, yesterday, the 25th. Uh, today, the 26th, we were looking for a long entry over the previous high of day. We got a high relative volume move up with 4% to the upside. <clears throat> we buy this trade, the, the long trigger on this trade is 1160. Uh, this trade popped up pretty quickly during open range. I didn't get filled till 1166, uh, but we'll look at the five minute chart so you can see the price action as this thing opened up. Uh, it opened up at 11.64. Remember, our entry target is 11.60. I have a general rule where I do not like to take trades before the 15 minute open range has been established. It's just too volatile and too light in volume. Uh, so I watched what this thing did here over the first, these are five minute candles, this is a five minute chart. So the first five, 10, 15, 20 minutes is trading under uh, our entry price. Uh, after um, 20 minutes, the 25th minute, now we're starting to get some volume. We're starting to gain some traction. This makes a red to green move here. Uh, we buy at 66, and this thing shoots up all the way to a high of 12.06 on the day. Uh, it's a 40 cent move intraday. We realized $1,200 in profit on this trade, and it never came against us once by buying the proper entry spot, which is over the previous high of day, and waiting for that open range to be established. This was a nice intraday winner. Um, unfortunately, we are paying ourselves uh, along the way, uh, scaling in and out of these trades, um, and because because we're doing that, we were able to lock up 1,200. If we were just holding this blindly, uh, this thing ended up turning into a doji today. So it gave up all its gains at the end of the day. But we don't care because we were already out of the trade for a huge profit. So this was a quick intraday winner. This is the kind of trades that we seek to replicate day after day after day. We're looking for five to ten percent or five to twenty percent over three to five days. If we only get five percent, we only get five percent. But if you ask any trader, uh, they'll tell you if they could have a five percent winner every single day of their trading career, they would be very, 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 very happy with that result. Okay, Leapfrog was another trade that was alerted back on June 23rd. Uh, we got a high relative volume move up, 4% uh, move to the upside. We're breaking the top of this little flagging pattern here, and it looks like Leapfrog may be ready to reverse. Maybe we'll move into this gap. We'll see what happens. A gap down after earnings. <clears throat> this thing starts moving uh, starts moving up. We get a long entry trigger at 150, uh, 152. So over 152, we want to be in this trade. I didn't get long until 154. That's where I got filled at. I got 7,000 shares at 150, excuse me, 
5,000 shares at 154. I was looking for 5%, about a 12 cent move, 13 cent move. We got three cents on it. It pops up to 158 and it comes back down and it holds uh, just above or just below our entry at 150. Um, my stop then becomes the second day of the trade. My stop then becomes the previous trade's low of day. So now if 150 breaks, I'm out of this trade at 149. So the next day, this thing pops up. It hits a high of 156, still not that 5% we're looking for, and it closes at 153, right about right about our entry. And then the fourth, uh, excuse me, the third day into the trade, it ended up breaking 150 and selling off, and we stopped out at 149 like we planned. And because we use good risk management in this trading with this trading strategy, uh, we only took a $250 loss here. Remember our last winner on RFP was a $1,200 winner when this is a $250 loser. This strategy is amazing for controlling risk and being able to realize three and four uh, to one risk reward ratios. So as a trader, it's critical uh, that we know our risk reward ratio and that we're putting ourselves in position to trade breakout stocks um, with, a, uh, with a five to 20% chance of a move to the upside so we can take our profits <clears throat> and then we minimize our risk by adjusting our stop to low of day. This is a very simple strategy. I teach it in mentor sessions. I teach it in the class. And we have traders that have never traded live before in their life. And these are the first trades they're taking. And they're profitable out of the gate, which is remarkable. We're extremely, uh, extremely proud of those students. They're doing a great job. And uh, definitely, uh, definitely going to keep working with them to make sure uh, that they understand the strategy in full. Because uh, even though it's simple, it does require... Uh, some basic knowledge and uh, it's something that everybody can do uh, regardless of your experience level um, and that's why the strategy is so great okay so this is Grubhub I was watching the stock uh, for a while now it's been on the watch list for a little while this is not part of that strategy this is a bull flag breakout uh, we're kinda testing this uh, we're kind of testing this uh, 3627 breakout spot. Now I use the TAS indicators, the TAS market boxes here, uh, show me that this is a resistance area. And you can see that we're kind of breaking this 36 area and we're pinching it. We're making a series of higher lows, but the top is still flat. So we're getting this nice wedge here. So you can see we're kind of making this nice wedge here and we're squeezing the top in this resistance area and we're looking for a breakout over the top of that resistance line uh, for a move to the upside. So here's the problem. I broke one of my own rules, which yes, even though I've been trading for as long as I have, 10 years, uh, I still make mistakes. And my mistake today was trading inside the open range. I'll put up a five minute chart of grub. <clears throat> The first five minute candle, well first of all, <clears throat> excuse me, this stock gapped up about 25, 30 cents from the close on Thursday. So I said, okay, it's gonna gap and it's gonna run. It's gonna test, finally test that resistance area and it's gonna break out. Uh, it popped up over 36.27, I got long at 36.31 and uh, you can see that was the last time it stayed at that price level. After that, it instantly came down against me and this thing tanked the rest of the day hitting a low of about 34, 34.01 or so. Um, just instantly moved against us. I did stop out on this trade uh, for a $430 loss at 35.45 um, and I took, uh, took my lumps on that one, broke my rule. I traded inside that first five minute candle when the market is most volatile instead of waiting for the open range to be established. Had I done that, after the first 15 minutes, I would have said, this thing is already down to 3580. It's nowhere near the breakout spot. I'm not interested in it. And it would have kept myself out of a losing trade. But I got excited because I saw the gap up. I saw that awesome pattern on the daily chart that looked like it was gonna squeeze the top and break out. Uh, but unfortunately, we never got that move to the upside. Like I said, it ended up tanking all day, but we bailed on the trade uh, for a small loss. So. Uh, overall, another profitable week. Uh, we're doing really well with that small cap strategy I mentioned. Really excited uh, to see how it performs throughout the summer. We have about a 75% win rate on it right now. So that means just about seven out of every 10 trades is a winner where we get at least 5% of the move. You can watch some of the videos from the last couple weeks where we got well over 20 and 30% moves to the upside. Um, 
Again, I want to remind everybody that we have the intro to trading course. If you're a new trader and you're looking to get started and you don't have a ton of capital and you want to get your questions answered by professional traders in a one-on-one -on -one setting, uh, you can go to our website. We'll put the link down at the bottom and sign up for that intro to trading course. This will be the first time we run it and uh, we're expecting a pretty good turnout. So if you have uh, any questions about that before signing up, email me jeff at warriortrading.com or you can hit me up on Skype. I accept everybody's Skype request. Uh, unless you're spam and uh, I will be more than happy uh, to talk with you guys. I'll be here all weekend working So uh, if you guys have any questions, please do let me know once again. Thanks everybody for listening uh, and We'll be back next Friday with our next recap. Have a good weekend